15, 16 teams will be in pursuit of the championship. 15 will fall by the wayside, and one team will rise as your champion of the 2014-2015 season. My name is Jazzy Josh Raymer. I'm joined in the booth today by my cameraman and co-commentator, Alex Heichelbeck. Alex, how you doing, bud? Fantastic. And let me just say, I am. this is probably the game I've been looking forward to most since they got announced. I am so excited about this game. Uh, yesterday, unfortunately, you didn't get to see the game that uh, myself and Ben Subcheck saw, but Townsend played one of the best games of dodgeball I have ever seen. Uh, and Ohio State, always a powerhouse. I'm going to be super excited to see how this goes. Townsend's even busted out their, like, super official uniforms, so this should be a big one. Yeah, you and Ben were quite impressed with Townsend yesterday, uh, and I think you might actually be leaning toward Townsend in this game. Uh, you know, it's kind of – I'm not as familiar with Ohio State, and I just loved the way Townsend's played. I've loved their attitude. I haven't seen any kind of negativity or aggression from them. And uh, a couple of the players, one that I want to point out, I'll need to get his actual name, Number 13 here, uh, yes, let's see, Mr. Clean, okay, so Mr. Clean, yesterday he was the bald eagle. Um, I Mark, Mark, Mark Sayon, okay. Um, he is, uh, he's got a great arm, but he tends to stick to playing kind of a defensive role. But uh, he plays a very aggressive defense. Uh, so, saw some amazing blocks, amazing catches, and a couple of self-sacrifices from him yesterday that I think helped their team in their just tremendous win uh, yesterday. One other player to take note of is the arrival of a player who really only needs a last name, Stringer, for OSU, has arrived today. He was absent uh, from, yeah, he's in the gray jersey, so he'll be easy to spot. He was absent from day one of Nationals, but has shown up, and you got to imagine that a fresh arm will be invigorating for the Ohio State Buckeyes. So we will see what happens here. We are about to get underway from round number one in the Sweet 16. Towson versus Ohio State should be a good one. And we are joined by our third member of the commentating party, Ben Subcheck. Ben, how are you, bud? I'm doing all right. I've been walking around, checking things out, talking to a few people. Interesting day. Good times. You and Alex were both kind of enamored with how uh, Towson played yesterday. Yes, we did, and we were incredibly impressed with the way they played. Um, I mean, this is Ohio State, though. Uh, you can't, you can't underestimate their skills either. So we're going to really – it's going to be an exciting match. I can't wait to watch it. Ohio State, a team that took JMU, a powerhouse, to overtime yesterday. So we shall see. But right off the bat, Mr. Clean, number 13, taking out a player for Ohio State off the opening rush. Team catch there. Keeps Mr. Clean in the game. The catch by number 15 of Towson. And the vocal leader for – Towson, number 11, John Shaw, one of my good buddies in the NCDA, fellow commentator, and the heart and soul of this Towson team, along with Sean Smith, number 19, definitely the two leaders on this team, and you have to imagine that on day two, the leadership aspect will be huge in keeping his team organized and working together well. Well, Ben, as we said, OSU, a team that took JMU to overtime yesterday during the round-robin play, what do you think Towson needs to do today to be able to knock off the Buckeyes? <laughs> to be aggressive, and they're doing it right now. You can see up on the right side there, they got four people up, and they're only going to throw one or two at a time, so they're going to maintain ball advantage. So they already have the momentum, and you can see Ohio State throwing one at a time. They're not capitalizing it on right now, uh, Townsend, but the idea, the strategy behind it is – Townsend's favor right now already. Yeah, Townsend definitely a lot of energy so far from both teams. Number 54 for Ohio State with the catch there. Ben, can we get a name for number 54 of Ohio State? Looks like that was Josh Levine. Josh, uh, I've seen him around a couple other tournaments, so I'm guessing he's one of the veteran players on this Ohio State team with a clutch catch there. 
Jazzy, one of the things that's so awesome about these tournaments is meeting so many different new people. Each year you're going to get a new fresh batch of, uh, of players, and then there's always people that keep coming back. Uh, you'll see in some of the NCDA jerseys off to the side, your referees, those are people that have been playing for years and years and years, and they're back to help out. So there is this really small, uh, tight-knit community, but every player that you're watching right now is an amazing person. They're very fun to hang out with, and I don't know about you, I've met a lot of these people. It, it's still very, it's impossible to know all their names at this point because so many people come in every single year. But uh, yeah, uh, like you said, number 54, uh, Mr. Levine, he seems like a really nice guy. I talked to him earlier today. So Very good. Well, yeah, I mean, the thing is every team comes here hoping to win the championship, but only one team gets to do that. So not every team is going to have that championship memory, but every team can leave here, hopefully making new friends, having new experiences that you'll remember forever. Sentimentality aside, uh, it looks like Towson is controlling the game early. I count one player out. And a great catch there brings him right back in. So Towson at full strength as scrub number two, number 21, <laughs> Kenneth Daniels, gets the catch there for Towson. Yeah, uh, be careful. Guys, the way we were, we're calling this game, and another catch by Shaw, number 11. We're calling what on... <laughs> What's on the back of their jersey, which, hey, I mean, if you're going to put that on the back of your jersey, we're going to call it like that. That's what makes this game fun is having these fun nicknames. Uh, so, you know, no, that's not actually his name, everybody. Scrub number two is not his name, but he's... He, that's his nickname, that's apparently. His nickname. We're so using that's, that's it. That's what we're going we're with. So Towson extremely fired up here in this first point. You have to love the energy that they're playing with, Ben. Uh, well, they've got some cannons for some arms, and I've never seen people catch better than this. There is a group in the middle right now that just loves catching. They literally want you to throw at them. And then you have the people off to the side who are just, they're just so well coordinated. Yeah, and that was a big loss there for Ohio State. Number four, Josh Connor going out. If everyone in their jail is actually out, I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten players in jail. But a nice catch there by, let's see. Ben Albert. Ben Albert? Okay. Ben Albert. Thank you, Ben. Saw, you just saw Ohio State is doing what they can on the side that they've been given or they started off with. The wall in the back of them is going to ricochet balls back to the opponent, opponent team, Townsend. So what you're seeing is Ohio State throwing their arms out as soon as one person, a ball gets by them in a, just a hope that as it ricochets back that it comes back or they block it so it doesn't go all the way back to Townsend. We have an, we have a, uh, an Ohio State timeout because they are already frustrated. Townsend is pumped. No, 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 that was actually a balls over. It's a sh shot clock violation shot clock. Oh. on Ohio State. So balls over to Towson. They are fired up right now. I count one player, John Shaw, in jail for Towson. So they are at 14 players. And it looks like from what we can see, Ohio State has nine players left in. So unless there's someone under this track that we can't see. So a So a 14 to nine advantage for Towson. That uh, initial volley there does not result in any kills for Ohio State. And another kill there by number seven of Towson, Josh Tope. The Topedo. The Topedo. They're all puns. Almost all of them are puns. And that's what you love. <laughs> and it really seems like OSU is kind of a little bit disheveled right now, uh, a little bit scattered. I don't know if they anticipated this kind of initial uh, punch from the Towson Tigers. Yeah. Do you think they look a little bit scattered right now? Uh, well, they're on their back foot. That's 100% sure on that one. But you'll, I mean, like I said, it's, they're so, Townsend is so well organized. They have two little core groups off to the right and left. Ooh, Ohio State. Like well, Ben That's Albert, yeah. Well, and you also got Ben Albert from Ohio State getting one of his players back in. He just got a catch. But you get two little core groups, one off to the left, one off to the right, and then everybody on Townsend is going for catches in the middle. All of them are really good. This is this number two. 
on, uh, on Townsend is just the key player for them. Now, what uh, interesting development here. John Shaw was already out for Towson, but now they've lost Mr. Clean, number 13, uh, Mark Sayan, and number 19, Sean Smith as well. So the two heart and soul players for Towson now on the sidelines, which you don't want those players on the sidelines, but there is, as John Shaw now comes back in, thanks to a catch, Sean will be able to direct his troops now from the sideline until number he's able two. to get back in. Number two is not even a captain, and he's doing that already. So you got such a core group on this on this team. And look at the counterattacks that number seven, Torpedo, is doing. And he's got a cannon of an arm, too, but he's a really good blocker. He's, he's played a couple different roles uh, this week, and, and uh, I've seen him do both really good arm throws and really good blocks. So watch number seven. I said yesterday, Sunday is where you see the Warriors rise up and seeing some of these throws early this morning. You think the adrenaline's probably carrying these guys through some of the uh, fatigue they feel in all parts of their body. Uh, um, yeah, their fingers are already, they're hurting. There's no doubt about it. Their arms, their shoulders, elbows, everything's hurting, but they're managing to get through. Oh, they're protecting. Look at that. The team just huddles in front of its leader, John Shaw, protecting him. And number 35, Jonathan Soward goes down for Towson there. So does number 25, Paul Peters of Ohio State. So it's getting down to the nitty gritty here with uh, looks like three, six, seven on Ohio State. Midair. When do you ever see that? It's really rare. Ben's out, number seven's out for Ohio State. It's a big loss. He had a couple of uh, clutch catches for them. Ben, I don't think I've seen a team as fired up as Towson is right now. They got 10 right now, and it is, it's, looking, it's looking like a, a, a clean point for them right now. But, hey, they got to they gotta finish. I don't know if they will. Yeah, what's so tough against a veteran team like Ohio State is finishing those points. Oh, and a little, nice, some nice, honest, 93 going out there. Ben, who was that? 93 for them is Vince Brickwig. So Vince going out there. I think it got him on the tips of his fingers, but you appreciate that honesty there. Number eight, that would be Josh Grimm, Grimmy, Grimy, going out for Towson there. So that whittles the Towson team down to eight, I count. Eight versus six, not as big of an advantage as you would think, but still, I mean, those two extra arms, the catching potential for their eight people rather than six, it's it's looking pretty good for them. On a, on a day two single elimination tournament, any advantage that you can get is crucial. Six, Jacob Howard has a cannon on Ohio State. That was, I felt that hit the nets, people. And that almost bounced off the net like it was bouncing off a brick wall. <laughs> Number 25 goes down there for Ohio Noah Brown, Noah Brown. Noah Brown goes down for Ohio State. The Buckeyes have been whittled down to, it looks like five players as best we can count. So they will be on the 10 count. A big advantage when you get down to that 10 count, especially on day two, that can seriously hurt your chances. Oh, yeah. Another one goes down. That was number 30. Who was that? Number 30 is Nick Fosnight, but number five goes out too. Or I, think. I can't see his number. He's all the way to the left of me. So we have another catch from Townsend as well. So the Buckeyes down to three players, and it looks like we have in nine for Towson, so a 9v3 situation right now. And it looks like we have just passed the 14-minute mark, so 14 minutes left in this first half. You have to figure what the pace of this game is probably going to be a low-scoring 3-2, 2-1 type of affair. Uh, yeah, probably. That's our best bet. Uh, I mean, it is an incredibly aggressive game, so we're seeing a lot of throws. I, I hope they can save their energy for later in the tournament because it's going to be tough. Yeah, number 
Number six, Jacob Halbert is holding his own Ohio State. He's just trying to reset the clock right now. Oh, no, no catch. Wow, that was a big one. Just misses on that catch. And Jacob Halbert again. Number Jacob six. Halbert, yeah. And we're down to only two Ohio State players left in. Looks like number 13, that's Jeff Starr, as well as, I can't get the other number for the Ohio State player, but Jeff Patrick Starr left in, number 13 on the left sideline. Looks like 44 for Ohio State, Ryan O'Connor. And it looks like Ryan O'Connor just eliminated, I'm not sure. He threw a catch. Threw a catch, okay. So, Jeff Starr, the lone remaining Buckeye. And he's up against it right now. You have to imagine his best bet right now is to try to get a catch, start to swing the momentum back in the Buckeyes' favor. What they're going to do right now is they're going to wait out every single shot uh, clock that they can, and they're going to throw three at a time so he cannot catch. They're going to wait out his shot clock every single time. So. He's having to make these obscure throws that mean nothing and are not going to get anybody out, but then they're going to throw two at once so he cannot catch. So they are just going, it's a cat and mouse game and he is going to lose. Okay, there was a, I think there was a shot clock, but I'm not positive. No, I think, no, it looks like it might have been a timeout. Timeout. I saw Zygmunt do the shoulder okay. tap, which is a timeout, so. Yeah. It's hard to explain how loud it is in here, but it is way louder than it was yesterday. It's very difficult for me to talk to Jazzy, and I'm right next to him, so I, I can't imagine the screaming that is going on down at the bottom below us, and then up here, the talking that of, of people, the, the cheering, every hit is a cheer. Oh, it's so fantastic. And that's what I love. It feels like a uh, fight club scenario when you pan around here, Alex, and show, show the people at home, the, the crowd that we have gathered around the top track of the Preston Center watching this game. I think they know kind of like we did that this was going to be probably your marquee matchup from round one of day two of Nationals. Well just looking around at the various uh, the teams that are playing yeah you got you got Ken off to our rise for Saginaw you've got no, that's Penn State. Penn State Penn State and th is, uh, then we got uh, Kent State and UWP State. so there one. are some good there are some good matchups but I think from what you guys saw from Towson oh, yeah. yesterday this was really kind of uh, a 10 seed that is that is insane to me because the 10 scene is going to go pretty darn far in this. Because what happened was Maryland and Towson got matched up as the 7-10. They asked if anyone would be willing to switch with them because they play so often. And so this matchup actually came out of that changed, uh, change in the seedings. Ooh, he should have caught that. He was thinking about it. I don't know if that can count to reset the shot clock. That was pretty high. Shaw trying to get the catch because he's going to be tired. Nice. Some crafty dodging. I mean, you got to give it to Star right now. He is really doing a nice job dodging these balls. This lone wolf, Jeff Star, star of the show right now for sure. Oh, he gets a kill too. Gets TJ, number two, for Towson out. And the kill.